So, how y'all doing? So longer. I love Benchmade. My first quality knife was Benchmade. It was this one right here. If I can actually open the damn thing. 531 Pardue. And it sparked my little addiction. I, I started running off from that. I needed something. I got that one, and I really liked it, but I needed, this is a catalog collection, but I needed something that was bigger, heavier built, you know? And so I bought another Benchmade, and it just started off from there. And I got a request from Knife Lover. It's actually got a badass YouTube channel. Check it out. On what are my top 10 favorite Benchmade folding knives. And starting off, number 10 is... This is the 3150 Impel, and this is one of my favorite knives just because it's, the name, the Impel, is fantastic. It's actually got, it's got some really good working capability being a sub two inch blade, and it's an automatic, right? I like to carry this thing on my left hand side, my weak side, just if I'm not carrying a neck knife, if I don't have a secondary blade on me, I like to carry this thing, well, I will, because this is my secondary, but I'm a left right or weak hand side just because it's an automatic it's still capable there's still a lot of work that can be done with this little thing so that's the impel next one up 44 nakamura and this one is if if you look at this knife right the just the aesthetic lines on it right for this is severely from a collector standpoint here but it doesn't look like the blade should fit into this handle quite and it's got some different lines to it it's just not classic and the way that this thing fits into my hand is fantastic i've got some larger hands and this thing still fits me like a glove i imagine it does feel better in a smaller hand but still it's just excellent some of the best bench made that, or some of the best jimping that's ever been done on a bench made it's got a lot of little custom accents little little custom features that's just really nice i like the standoff construction how actually wide it is it fits my hand fills your hand up really well and again sub three inch blade so that's another legal one to carry in Alameda County where I'm at I don't really uh, go too much into blade length I don't carry automatics or ballet songs as much but uh, so that's just a really neat little feature on it the next one here is the 531 I don't carry this thing around but I play with it all the time and again it's just the little things the little accents set this thing off it's got the jeweled liners and you don't and they didn't finish the titanium uh the the liners here so the edges have that little bit of a little bit of texture to it it's got the rounded spine with a beautiful finish on this crazy sick ass blade i love that spear point saber ground blade just an excellent overall knife a fantastic design i honestly i think flipping my 63 is a little bit funner it's 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 a better knife but this one takes the cake as far as just if i could have only have one of them the next one on the list is the 746 mini onslaught and again this one is almost just from a collector's standpoint because of its lines it's so sleek and it's just it's got a, again a rounded spine except it's not rounded here they cut it off right so that little little bit of extra accent you see the finish that's on here it's got a really heavy stone wash on this 154 cm that comes down to a razor's edge i mean it's so thin behind that cutting edge there this is just an excellent little slicer it doesn't have any forward stopping capability but it doesn't need it because of the swoop in the handle right here stops you any sort of penetration mo penetrating motion you have to do it's excellent it's just comfortable in the hand the little uh I don't like the fact that this is actually, it's a polymer or FRN material. I wish that the backspacer had been made out of G10, but the aesthetic it still has and that it's rounded and it protrudes a little bit from the spine is excellent. I like the little dimple here. It makes it great and maneuverable in the hand. You've got a pivot section. So this is just an excellent design. Uh, the late Bob Lum designed that one. Great knife. Next one up on the list is actually from the Hunt series. And if you're familiar, this is a uh, new for this year, new for 2016. This one is the Crooked River. And again, it's just the little things that set this one off for me. The orange pivot, this orange backspacer that again protrudes a little bit from the spine, but it's been knurled. It's got that texturing to it. The oblong shaped lanyard hole here. The overall ergonomics. This thing just feels so good in my hand and it's a freaking beast look at the size of this thing it's huge it just you can walk around on it it's got so many different capability you know able holds that all feel really good in your hand it's very classic it's very sleek i really like this one the next ones that i'm going to bring up for you actually i don't have anymore um the one of here i'll bring these up 
and we're going to go to my photos. This is the 755 Mini Pocket Rocket. It's a Shane Siebert design knife, G10 on one side, G10 scale on one side, and it's a full G10 scale. It comes all the way around, and that is actually what causes it is forming the backspacer. It's got a G or a, sorry, titanium liner lock here. You can or titanium frame lock, liner lock, I'm not quite sure. It's a different pocket clip that's actually on it. This isn't the pocket clip that came on it standard. This is an old picture from Benchmade, but it's got an M390 sub 3 inch beefy, broad beefy blade. Kind of a ridiculous knife in itself. The next one up on the list is the uh, 610 Ruckus. This is a knife that I've only played with. I've never, I've held it. I've never actually owned it. My buddy still got one and I love this knife. It's freaking ridiculous. I couldn't find very good, very many good pictures of it, but you can see here just the overall size and overall design of the knife. It's very thick. This is up next to a 940 or 943, excuse me, but you can see how broad how thick this thing is and it's huge again you can walk all around it you can handle it any different ways you want and it's so smooth the weight of this blade seeing as how it has an access lock this knife flies around it flips open so it's just a really really great design knife that's the 610 ruckus and those are actually the next two on my list and from there i go to the 531 Pardew. This is the first really quality knife I ever bought. This is my suit knife. This is my um, gentleman's knife. If I'm going on a date where the, I'm not sure the girl is going to be very suited to me having a fixed blade, something like that. If she is, that that's preferable. However, you know, I mean, if you don't know, you know, I don't like to to carry too big a knife. Things pulling my pants down, something like that, something that may be intimidating. I'm going to have multiple knives on me, but this is going to be my go-to just because it's more sleek. It's a little bit more elegant, and it doesn't weigh anything. It's so light. I can put this into any article of clothing I have, and it's not going to be obtrusive. It's not going to be noticeable. It's not going to be seen from the outside. The next one up is the 757 bicker this thing is a freaking beast shane siebert is my favorite knife designer and it's because of the he just nails ridiculousness i mean it, it it's it's i don't know what to call it i, I almost want to say it's overbuilt but it's not you know what i mean because that doesn't really exist it's it's look at the 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 how thick these titanium slabs are they've got them bronze anodized which is just great because you don't see that too much you see a lot of blue anodizing on titanium but you don't see the bronze as much bronze anodized titanium pocket clip it's got the layer g10 scales on it it's almost too grippy but they've <laughs> they messed uh, uh, yeah they, they didn't do the pocket clip here quite right but this blade design the blade shape is very unique it's like a tonto clip point mix that they had a baby and it's got this excellent stone wash on it with the double grind it's just a fantastically beautiful blade with some again some of the best jimping on a bench made out there it's got that octagonal stopping pin which i i i really actually am a fan of i've been using it on a couple of my other knives it's got the shane siebert classic fuller right there just overall fantastic design knife and before i bring out my number one if you've been counting here um i've got two that actually aren't on the table so before i bring out my number one favorite i wanted to throw out just a couple honorable mentions because i feel that i would it, i would be remiss if i didn't at least have them in this video one of them is the Barrage. This doesn't make it into my favorite, but it's just... Right, this thing slams open. If you like having an automatic, that, 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 that pop that an automatic gives you, that satisfying click, that slam, you know, you don't get from a whole lot of assisted knives. And this thing de-assisted is one of my favorite knives, just because of the overall ergonomics and being able to maneuver it like this. You know, open and close it like that. I really like that about this knife, but I've reassisted it because I've started collecting a little bit more automatic knives and I want that slam in my pocket when I'm walking around during the day. And with this knife here, it flies open. This thing, this thing is mean. It kicks so hard because that coil spring in there and just the overall design of it. This is probably one of the better Americanized Tontos. I'm not the biggest fan of an Americanized Tonto, but again, it's got the 154 CM. The scales are kind of one of the reasons that it doesn't make it onto the list. It, I don't like these Velox scales. Um, 
the again the plastic bag spacer there's just some things to this where it doesn't quite make it on the list but it's still an excellent knife i wanted to mention it and another one on that is the h and k and i don't feel quite right putting this in the lineup because again it's not actually a benchmade it's an h and k it's made by benchmade but it is an h and k product right and it, the reason that this one makes it on the list is this is a mini ruckus, right? The 610 ruckus that I showed you a picture of a second ago. This is just a mini version that has a push button automatic instead of, um, you know, the, the, the manual action axis lock. So I love the blade shape of this thing. The ergonomics in hand, it's fat, but it's got that taper. So it fits my hand incredibly well. It's locked in there. It doesn't go anywhere. And again, it just slams open pretty good you know what I mean? it's got a great action on it for a push button automatic i just really like this thing and if you watch my channel for any period of time this one might not surprise you on what my favorite knife is but it might actually kick it up might might not be expecting it this is a benchmade 551 griptilian this is my favorite knife for multiple reasons. First of all, being the over, just the ergonomics of it, because it feels excellent in the hand. There's no hot spots. There's no real pointed areas anywhere on this. It's a very ergonomic design. This was designed by Mel Pardu, right? And by all rights, Mel Pardu is a phenomenal knife designer. I don't want to compare it to a, a different, throw it up against a different knife designer, but if you're familiar with Ken Onion, the way that he does very ergonomic, very flowing designs. There's an interview where Ken Onion says that he, he gets a lot of his des design ideas from fish. And that's what this thing reminds me of. It's got that very natural, very ergonomic, very um, lifelike just feel to it. It's it's designed around something that, I mean, it just fits my hand phenomenally well. It's got 154 cm steel. The blade shape is fantastic. It does everything that you really need a knife to do. And at the same time, this knife right here is a $100 a hundred freaking dollars that's one of the biggest keys for me because it's a hundred dollars you get all of that all of that quality all of that bench made craftsmanship made in america you get the warranty you get the access lock you get everything from bench made quality everything from you know, I mean oregon city oregon but it's a hundred freaking dollars it's an entry level to the whole lineup right and that just when you don't have to pay for the quality and you still or you don't and you still get that quality but you're not paying that super premium price that a lot of bench made a lot of other bench maids i mean this is a $300 freaking knife right here so it's just yeah i think that this is the best bench made and it's their bread and butter i think they probably sell a mini more than they sell the full size griptilian this is a 551 model they probably sell more of the 556 model than they do the 551 but you know this is their bread and butter this is just a go-to knife for so many people this is so many people's edc and it's it's never gonna it's not going anywhere it won knife of the year in 2001 when it was introduced with the thumb stud. I mean, shit. But that's all of them. Bench made, bench made. You have a good one. Shout out to Knife Lover. Watch his channel.